Hello, not here. Welcome back to Grim Dawn. We are playing with a Drain Essence Death Knight, who apparently scares cultists into running away. We're playing on the Hardcore on Elite, and we have arrived at the Dark Veil Gate. So, for today, let's see if we can make it to uh, the snow. Hope we can take out uh, Kiraz, Sigil of Katon. Um, have some fun doing that. Hello, goodbye. So in between episodes, I had a, a look at my uh, homestead reputation and I realized I was three or four hundred points away from heading a revert status. So I picked up a very simple bounty, killed some trolls in the uh, smugglers pass. And now I'm actually at a revert status with the uh, homestead. And that gets me access to some uh, some some shiny things. So there's a couple of blueprints I already had, but uh, revert basically it unlocks a lot of level 70 stuff. Most importantly, it unlocks augments for your armor that you can start using at level 70. So for homesteads, the relevant ones are fire and lightning resistance and PS and fire resistance for your armor. They also unlock a bunch of other things for your jewelry slots, but none of them actually looked good from a defensive perspective. And I tend to use my augments primarily defensively. So for this one, the PS is going to be helpful because we're not quite maxed out on pierce. And for this one, the lightning is going to be relevant because again, we're not quite maxed out on lightning. But as a side effect, we're going to spike fire resistance and we'll be good with that. Last episode, we found a lot of items and this one dropped and I just realized this is a level 75, not a level 71. Because I figured maybe this could be interesting to, to build around 40% ether resistance as well as a decent bunch of health, as well as more energy regen than what we currently have. Well, that, that could potentially be an upgrade. Also, more armor. But if it's six levels away, I don't think we're going to grow into this. And I think we're actually going to go with the... Uh, with another plan wait until something better drops or until maybe we get the uh, uh, revert status with the black legion since we are now moving into black legion territory a lot of quests will end up benefiting our reputation with that faction and of course once we have level uh, 70 with them or uh, no revert with them we unlock level 70 versions of the base items that they offered and if you recall i ended up upgrading a lot of my gear into black legion gear because it has very solid bonuses to chaos and ether resistance and they even have a very nice body armor that is for casters so i think that is going to be my alternative plan I just misread the uh, level there. No, no, to be told, the, the item, it, it, it was a fair side grade. It wasn't a strict upgrade. Because my current one has 40 uh, poison resistance. That is something that the other one had 42 uh, ether. But no, it didn't have enough to compensate. So I, it would be a build around. But of course, this stage of the game, prepping your ether resistance is not a bad thing. Because Lucius is close. And Lucius does a lot of ether resist damage. He doesn't do resistance. That, that will be odd. Hello, Harbinger. Only three levels above me. Yeah, that's alright. I can work with that. Also, let me rip your spirits out. Because I can. That skill's not ready. And there we are. Feels like I took a different route than I usually do. Most of the time I end up approaching this from the, from the top end. But, well, stars aligned and this looks like a uh, faster route. I mean, it's not until level 2 here where we get to the boss. So it doesn't really matter. No, it's not like we're missing out on a boss fight or something. Hey, hello there, Mr. Houndcaller. At least with a name like that, I'm assuming you're a mister. Okay. 
So we're curious to uh, see how the, the fight's gonna go, because it's usually you know, Kiros first stage not that impressive. Second stage he, he gets he gets angry, he does a lot of damage, summons lots of things. No, oh, he's a little little splashy. So let's see uh, if we uh, are splashy enough to uh, counter his splashiness. Like that, I see. I did close the thing. Yeah, so one of those those little details. If you keep one of these bags open like that, because no, you had looked at it or something, and this one overflows, it always overflows to the one that is visually open first, and then it starts from the left rather than always starting from the left. So now you can use it to control your overflow, but sometimes unintended things happen, and then now if you're like me, you have like a, a whole bag dedicated to augments, quest items, all kinds of. Uh, Stuff like that. Then you have got a little bit of a mess to clean up. So, hello there, portal. Of course, this one does not do anything. It's just there for uh, a visual reference. Like, these are the things that come from portals. And this Iron Gate takes us to the boss fights. Hello. Carol, Sigil of Katon, you are level 73, four levels above me. So let's just rip your spirit out, siphon your souls, shout at you a little. And just ignore the add-ons, because, well, we've got an AOE skill. Now, you get a little angrier, yeah. So, once again, just rip out his spirits, the Unraveler. Just flailing about a little bit. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that 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 was kind of a letdown. He he went down without too much of a fight really. Oh, there's always ultimate. Maybe maybe he'll put more up more of a fight on, on ultimate difficulty. So what did we get? We got necrosis, the relic, not not the affliction. That would be that would be horrible. So this is a mythical relic. It takes scourge, torment, corruption. So that's all the all the pleasant stuff basically. And it gives us some vitality damage, vitality damage percentage, some physique, some health, some offensive ability, some casting speed, and. Reduced offensive ability retaliation. So, well, you hit me, you won't hit me again. That's kind of nice. Necrosis is an active ability, 8 second duration, 5 meter radius, so it's like a small curse. Does quite some vitality damage. Reduces the target's movement speed. Their ether and chaos resistance, as well as elemental resistance. So, it, it, it's like a vulnerability in a relic. That's uh, not too bad, but... Not overly impressed either. Because this build already has oh, a decent chunk of resistance reductions built in. And in that case, no, getting plus one to all necro skills is probably a little bit stronger. But if you have got a, a build that actually uses more of those elements, maybe you know your uh Albrecht's Ether Ray or something, I think that one was Ether and Cold, then you might benefit more from it than, than I am. Also, Empowered Swamp Dwellers Legguards. I think we've seen this before. Oh, lots of poison and bleed resistance. And this is a book that would be nice to read from. Learn some, some, some summoning spells or something. Also, treasure room up here. Some boss fights have treasure rooms tucked away to the side. So they're easy, easy to overlook. This is one of them. And then we can walk out of here. Okay, well, that, that was one of my fastest uh, gate runs ever. So that takes us to the snow. Well, that's good. Then there is a waypoint here. In the snow, we have a shrine that we're not gonna be able to use yet but we will be able actually we don't need to pick up the rowari quest because we already have it from a lower difficulty of course that is kind of neat 
But we still need the uh, the second part, which no won't be uh, available to us until the Plains of Strife. The second spirit piece. So no, it's it's nice that we encounter the shrine, but we can't actually clear it yet. But no, we're making decent progress and getting at least to the next waypoint. Would be nice. I don't think we've got the time for the Tomb of the Arkan today. Usually that by itself is just a, a whole run. Then again, with the, the speed we're progressing here, I'm a little less sure of, of what can and cannot be done in an episode, since no? sometimes things go a little faster than you would expect. Ooh, it's always nice if you manage to tag an enemy that is just on the edge, and then you can run away for a half a screen. Okay, let's grab all of that stuff. And move out. So we've already listened to the entirety of the of the story on our way through. So there's no more book drops. There's nothing really interesting here anymore. With the exception, of course, of uh, the the bosses near uh, the final encampment, close to waypoint. I don't think they were truly bosses. They were just. Named to regular mobs. Hi, right. you you have a star over your head. That means you are a hero. So, that skill's not ready. be a hero. Right. So, as a, a friend used to say when we were playing Diablo 2. Multiplayer, hardcore, dead heroes don't level up. Dead hero never will level, level up anymore. Okay, so these Ether Hulks, they've got a decent f a bit of resistance on them. Suspect they're pretty heavily resisting Ether, which kind of, of course, counters a lot of my damage. I mean, what's the current breakdown? Yeah, uh, about a third of the total damage output is ether, and what is it? This is nearly forty percent or something is vitality decay, which of course uh, works rather well, and is one of the reasons why you can you know, just splash some drain essence all about, and things will generally just keel over. Because that Vitality Decay debuff is so insanely strong. Downside is that, of course, the, the damage over time component is not really benefiting us for the life leech. That's only for the uh, pulses that actually hit the enemies. Okay, there is uh, the waypoint. So then let's, let's head down here and at least say hello to the ladies. Nuana and Sylvie and they are totally dead or oh, they won't be bothering travelers anymore that, that's maybe the better way to uh, to put it no if if you were a, a traveler and no you, you wouldn't get bothered by all of these boars wait now that I think of it, why did they have to resort to cannibalism when they they clearly have a boar infestation problem here? This game, really. Law inconsistency. It, 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 it's, it's not... Yeah, it just, just clicked. I mean, they've got a, a massive boar infestation here. So why did they have to resort to, to cannibalism rather than just hunting down the boar? It, it, it doesn't make sense. Ah, I mean, it, it, it's one of my, my favorite story arcs of, of this entire game. And now I just, just realized like, wait, it, it doesn't, just doesn't make sense. Also, we found ourselves an empowered cruel edge. 20% chance when hit to cast a weak battle cry, boosting total speed and damage. I don't think it's gonna uh, be better than the empowered doom soul of gluttony. I 
mean, if they had enough people, they could just hunt down the boars, right? It's better than, than you know, trying to eat each other and, and, and do all kinds of odd stuff. If there's just enough wildlife to, uh, to take out. So, hmm. Or would the, 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 the correct lore interpretation be that, well, right now there's a boar infestation because all of the people died, of course. But before, when the travelers were there, then there was no boars. And then they would go hungry. And now that the people are gone, the boars have more moved in. And the yetis, and the cultists, and the undead. And whatever else has decided to, uh, to move in here. So we will be back here for the uh, hidden path. Right around the uh, the time we face down the, the Lokorian. I think it's... Uh, no, Lokorian, uh, hidden path, move on. Kind of deal. But yeah, no, you can, can feed a village with the meat that comes off one of those gargantuans. So if you, you know, manage to just hunt down a small pack of them, then you should be you should be good. I can imagine that that Yetis can also probably be hunted down and eaten. No idea what a Yeti would taste like. What would a Yeti taste like? I mean, they're they're also kind of oh, wild, right? So you'd expect them to will have like a, a strong flavor, like game meat, or like like deer and things like that. It's also a no, stronger taste than the, uh, the stuff you usually find in the, in the supermarket. Though those things look rather muscular, so I guess they're, they'll be pretty chewy. No, uh, in the, 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 the Star Wars pun there was not intended, of course, but, well, once made, can't be unmade. Ragrathar Rageblood. He uh, tends to live in these places. Sometimes you encounter him, sometimes you miss him. Actually, most of the time I manage to miss him. He's just random spawn in the area. So down here is the uh, tomb of Korvac. Which is only relevant for the uh, Kaimis Chosen, if I remember correctly, from the at least from the, the, the standard quest. I believe one of the very endgame quests does send you there as well. Or one of the secret quests in the endgame. But that's a ultimate only thing, so not yet irrelevant. I'll uh, dive into that one once we get there. So, another waypoint. Oi, you really want to go to your death? Then sure, I'll, I'll help you. So on normal there is this shrine here, but I suspect we'll have to do a little bit more work for our devotion points. Yeah, because the shrine used to be here. Stamon stole the shrine. Well, so far still so good. I'll say energy management is feels like less of an issue than it, it usually does. Could be that I'm getting hit enough to actually trigger some uh, some energy leech. Mark of the Traveler. There's no regular corpses here. Things that have been sacrificed. I don't think so. Okay, and just glancing over at the time. I think we should be able to just push through and grab at least the uh, Fort Icon waypoint. Yeah, that's probably going to be alright. So the next episode we can do the... Uh, the, the tomb of the Archon. And after that, it's gonna be Lucius O'Clock. And then Planes of Strife. Where, yeah, it, it's, this part of the game always feels like you're just moving through things at an incredibly rapid pace. So of course, because there's, uh, on, on the map, it's just a huge stretch of, of, uh, of land that you're covering in a relatively small amount of areas. Mm -hmm. 
So, no, from without that, no, it, it feels like it's more than it is. Okay, and I can't go through the fence. Despite all of my superpowers, I can't move through a fence or jump over the fence or anything. You got a oh, witch doctor in the back. I don't think I'd like that. You you are healing your friends. That also explains why they were so uh, so sturdy. Also, he was was twitching. That that didn't look all that healthy. Maybe just no trying to find a, a relaxing pose to to lie there for all of eternity. I mean, he's dead after all, right? You got to make yourself comfortable before doing that. Okay, so Kami's Chosen are here. Well, let me just f jump in here. So, put up a portal here and then move on to the next area. And then from the way, uh, from, the, from the portal there, or the, the way gate there, I can just go back to my portal. It saves a little bit of uh, travel time. Hello. Goodbye. Uh, wait. I feared off course a little bit. Oh, hello. Well, everybody pay attention to me. Oh, there's not a lot of everybody left. Okay then. Yeah, the, the power level of the build definitely feels good right now. I'm uh, very happy that the energy ma management is, is under control for the time being. We've got a no, series of upgrades to look forward to. No, the next tier of armors will, of course, have more energy regeneration, boosting my base. No, putting more points into spirit will, of course, also help with the energy regeneration problem. No, of course, no, we're, we're leveling a bit slower in this. Only... 30 one more levels to hit before we're maxed out. So, no, there's a, there's a limit on that. Hello, everybody. But of course, pet gear will also come with uh, more attribute points. Haha, you. There. Wait, come on. There you are. Rhyme heart. So we're thinking like, wait, why can't I target you? And that is a purple one, so it is ours. A lot of items dropped, so we got ourselves a empowered eye of the beholder, plus three to terrifying gaze. Um, that's basically it. Well, a bunch of green, green stuff, but most of that is trash, so we're not going to have a look at all of it. Um, yeah, this whole thing of going to Fort Icon, I should have talked to Captain Summer first. Because now I have to travel up and down multiple times. Though it is not that difficult, really. Why Say hello. Carol says that. I will have a chat with uh, Inquisitor Creed. Got myself a Empowered Insignia of Justice. Which is Shadow Strike and Blade Barrier. That's interesting that Justice is associated with the Night Blade. Maybe the uh, Shadowy Assassin thinks that the Night Blade does really are for a good. You're here. Good. With the Maybe I should actually click the green the button. Okay, so now you're sending me through to the next place, which I've already conquered. Keep in mind, got a portal open, so I should actually walk here and then go back to Icon. And now the Black Legion has their own place out here. 
good. You've arrived. Betrayal. Precisely. Cool. So, Commander has been taken over. What do you need? You want explosives. I can deliver explosives. And the Black Legion still needs nearly 7,000 reputation. That, that's quite a bit. Though, killing Ethereal Vanguard in Melmoth is gonna help quite a bit. And of course, there's a couple of quests here that will give a decent XP as well. well actually, I think I need to park myself at a vendor and empty my pockets. So I'm gonna do that. In the next episode, we're gonna go after the Tomb of the Archon. So for now, I'm gonna thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you again next time. Bye bye.